there's a lot of you out there, isn't there? <laughs> uh, welcome to Spring Fling. My name's Maxine. I feel like Maxine is enough for tonight. We're all on a first name basis now. Um, I too would like to acknowledge the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation um, and the land on which I stand and acknowledge the other events that have happened to throughout today uh, to support uh, Cassius and his family. Um, we're all here because we believe that words matter and ultimately one of the reasons word, words matter is that they precipitate action. So I'm hoping that everyone who's here today can go out and do what they can to raise the profile of the events that have happened while we've been inside this hall in any way they can, whether that's donating, whether it's engaging with the issues, whether it's finding out what more you can do. Um, ultimately, words matter, but actions matter more. So my piece this evening is called The Bad Bits. There I am in faded family Polaroids circa 1982. All soft Afro curl and tiny knit pearl jumpers, way too English for a suburban Aussie kid. Even in July, when the frost turned each individual blade of grass in the local parks, sports fields and backyards into crisp ice sculptures that crunched underfoot. There I am, all fat-cheeked and smiling, with chubby brown legs you want to sink your teeth into. And the food. In the family albums, it is always nearby. Mashed banana smeared over my cheeks, Winnie the Pooh spoon still in hand, joy in my eyes, a slimy yellow fruit oozed between my fingers. There I am, licking the spoon, licking the bowl, licking the tray of my high chair. There's me, holding a peeled mango, eyes rolled back into my gleeful toddler face, juice dripping down my chin. Fruit was my thing, but I would howl when I got to the bad bits of these delectable desserts. When I got to the broad, rough, hard seeds buried deep inside the mango flesh, the smooth, tiny black pips that peppered the pink watermelon fruit. I would howl when my teeth grated on the coarse, corky seeds inside the grapefruits and mandarins that grew on the backyard trees my parents planted when they first moved into our house. I detested the tiny pips inside the grapes mum carried in her Mary Poppins-esque handbag for when she might need to keep me quiet for a moment in the bank or the grocery store. When I encountered these aberrations, these tricks, these hard, inconvenient blemishes, I would interrupt the divine bliss of slurping, throw back my head and yell indignantly as if violently affronted. It was as if a goblin had suddenly leapt from inside the fruit and slapped me in the face. A bad bit, I would roar, always in shock as if it had never, ever happened before. A bad bit. My parents would laugh, like a dog chasing its tail, the random confusion of a small child is unbearably adorable. The indignation with which I encountered the bad bits was palpable. Who put them there? Why? Who would put those hard, inedible things inside my delectable snack? What kind of person hated me enough to inflict such an indignity when I was just trying to enjoy some sweet fruit goodness? Over time, the shock faded. On being handed some piece of fruit or other, I would still ask the benevolent grown-up preemptively, did you take the bad bits out? If they weren't familiar with my terminology, they might reply, oh, this is fresh fruit, or there aren't any bad bits. And I would stare down into the apple or pear thinking, but I can see them. I know they're in there. Why are you trying to trick me? And I would solemnly hand the piece of fruit back. But if they were a recurring cast member in the narrative of my young life, they would understand my concern and produce the offending, already removed stone or pip for me to approvingly inspect. Enter my maternal grandmother, Nana Millie, a gentle, perceptive, black, beautiful woman in her mid-50s, always immaculately dressed with hair she roller curled every second night. It was Nana Millie's first time in Australia 
and she was visiting us from her adopted faraway home, Black Britain, where my parents had grown up. Black Britain was a world of jerk chicken cookouts roadside at Notting Hill Carnival, of growing yam and potato in tiny backyard terrace rental plots. Black Britain was weekend barbecue gatherings of island folks from Jamaica, Guyana, Barbados, Trinidad, and Tobago. Black Britain was community meetings about the Brixton riots, about workplace racism, or about the latest attack from the National Front. Black Britain was dub poet Linton Kwesi Johnson on the radio players of the young black folk on the block singing, fascists on the attack, nobody's worried about that fascists on the attack, we will fight them back. It was corner stores stocked with imported tin, tinned ackee. It was butcher shop windows displaying fresh oxtail. Black Britain was not to be confused of the England of Buckingham Palace, tall furry black soldier hats and unseasoned food. In any case, now Nana Millie was here on Gadigal land in the small white picket fence, then rural fringe Sydney suburb of Kellyville, sitting on our back porch in the 39 degree January heat, still somehow managing to look graceful as she swatted at flies with her woven cane placemat. Take the bad bit out, Nana, I said. Take the bad bit out, as she handed me half a summer peach with the seed still attached. My grandmother peered into the peach, then stared into my face and quizzically asked, hmm, the child talking about the stone in the fruit? Of course, my parents nonchalantly replied, perplexed that there could be any other meaning. Can you take the rock out please, Nana Millie? I stared up at my grandma, entreating her. Child, that stone not a rock, she clarified. That stone a seed. Of course, I knew a seed was an alternative word for those hard, gritty, inedible things. But why wasn't Nana just removing the thing so I could get on with eating it? Mom, stop talking riddles to the child and let her eat, my mom said. The child now know where the fruit grow from, said my grandmother, matter of factly. What are you talking about, Mildred? That was dad. My grandmother held fast. She now know that the seed inside the fruit, so the fruit, can grow. Now this is all sounding kind of weird, pro-life slash birds and the bees-ish, but I can assure you it was way more innocent than that. Child, them stone and pip in the fruit not there to affront you. Them there so the fruit can grow again and you eat more of them to your little belly content. What? I examined Nana Millie's face to see if she was joking. She didn't seem to be. The bad bits inside the fruit, they weren't bad bits at all. They were magic little nuts that grew more delicious fruit. Round the side of our house was a large deep vegetable bed and every summer, spring, autumn or winter there will be a different crop, just one. A full bed of shiny leaf spinach in winter, a sprawling vine in autumn providing enough glorious orange vegetables for my mum's pumpkin pie climbing string greens in the spring. Sometimes I would help mum tip the seeds from the paper packet and drop them into the pre-made indents in the rich black soil. But somehow it never clicked to me that the seed in the fruit was seed seeds. That life ultimately was a never ending circle and the bad bits weren't the bad bits, they were life pushing itself forward in hard, protected gems. From then onwards, I would gently pull the seeds out, cradling them in my hand. Sometimes I would dry them on my windowsill and plant them in the garden with varying degrees of success. My mother would tell me, you've got quite the green thumb, Maxine. Another perplexity which required explanation down the phone line this time from Nan. Them nya mean it green like you an alien from the sky. Then mean you know how to plant things and bring life. These days I am an avid gardener. I know that there is meaning in the bad bits. I used to pull out the weedy nettles that scratched and itched my hands when tending to the veggie beds. Now I know 
that boiled into a liquid, these bad bits are an antidote to the powdery mildew that La Nina scatters across the zucchini plants. The tiny, weird-looking red insects that I used to swat, they are parasitic wasps. They lay eggs inside the bodies of the fat green caterpillars munching through my kale beds. Their eggs hatch into young that devour the pests. The possums that come for the worm-riddled decoy crab apple tree in the yard, they drop their waste below and power it to grow so they can eat more. The berries in the backyard of one property that I'd thought might be poisonous were sweet native midium berries. I chased some plants up and tripled them in number and started acquiring other native food plants for the garden of each property we passed through. Sometimes the bad bits aren't the bad bits, just like Nana Millie said. Sometimes the bad bits are simply the bits we do not yet understand.